Hey guys, it's Chloe. Welcome back or welcome to the channel if you're new. In today's video, I am back at it doing some more maintenance on my Toyota Tacoma and I've got a couple of new maintenance items that I've had to do for the first time on my truck like replacing my battery because my stock one finally after four years decided to kick the bucket while I was at work of course. But what I really wanted to do was film a video on a subject that I've been thinking about a lot and that is what are some of the maintenance mistakes I've made? If you watch my channel, you know we like to DIY and we definitely don't mind getting our hands dirty sometimes, but just being a DIYer and the average truck owner, automotive enthusiast, whatever you want to call it, but basically not necessarily a mechanic. There were of course a lot of things I learned over time just from owning the truck. It just comes with the territory. Nobody can be perfect. And now to coworkers, friends, and people that I know that have these newer Tacoma trucks, I just like to share my experience and things I would have done differently, especially if you're the type of person that wants to take on doing some of this DIY routine maintenance yourself in your own garage. And none of what I'm about to share is rocket science, honestly. After all, it is a Toyota and they're pretty easy to maintain for the average owner. But I hope these things help out if you're just getting started. Additionally, thanks to my friends at Haviland for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel for the past couple of years. Anyone who's no stranger to my YouTube here probably knows why Haviland has been my choice in synthetic motor oil for the past few years on my vehicles, especially this renewable Pro RS made from 25% sustainably sourced plant-based oils, but we'll circle back to that in a little bit. Let's start out with talking about the battery. Now I mentioned this is something I recently had to change. I did four years and two months on the original OEM battery before it finally died. Honestly, that's not bad, especially for a lead acid battery. So when I was doing research about new batteries, I highly considered sticking with OEM, but because of the value, I ended up on buying a battery from Walmart, specifically the Everstar Platinum. This is an AGM battery or an absorbed glass matte battery, which is different than the stock battery, which again is a lead acid. And there's a little bit of a caveat to having an AGM battery on the Toyota Tacoma, but more on that in a little bit. But the one thing I recommend when you're actually changing your battery or disconnecting it for any reason for that matter is having this. Now what this is, is a memory saver ECU power connector. Basically you plug this side into your OBD2 port, give it 12 volts, and essentially when you remove or disconnect your battery, all of your radio and ECU settings won't actually get wiped. Now in a lot of vehicles, you can plug this into the OBD2 port and the other side you can plug into your cigarette lighter. I wasn't sure if this will work on the Tacoma, which is why I got this adapter. But yeah, this is how you save all your settings when you're doing battery maintenance or don't have a battery connected. In a lot of my install videos, I'll recommend disconnecting the battery depending on what we're installing, but admittedly, I wish I had also recommended to use something like this because again, disconnecting the battery for a certain period of time can cause those settings to get wiped. In my case, when my stock battery died last week, I was having all sorts of really interesting electronics issues. Like my average calculated MPG would would reset back to zero even though I didn't fill up. I'm sure some ECU settings were reset back to the factory ones. Now obviously that wasn't by choice because my battery was just dying and I kind of didn't have control over that until I got my new battery. But point being, if you're intentionally going to disconnect the battery, utilize something like this. Losing your radio or ECU settings can be annoying. I 
I mentioned before that this kind of battery is different than the stock lead acid one. Again, it's an AGM. The difference is, which if you don't know, which I honestly didn't know until recently either, is that for lead acid batteries, you basically have these like lead plates that are submerged in the electrolyte. But then with AGMs, you have these fiberglass mats sandwiched between the lead plates. AGMs are more expensive than their lead acid counterparts, but can Comparatively, they're safer, they're tougher, they're technically maintenance free, they don't corrode, can charge faster, and are deep cycle. However, AGMs require a higher charge voltage and the Tacomas are calibrated to charge a lead acid battery. So as is, my AGM battery won't actually get a full charge and that's not good for any kind of battery because it can reduce its lifespan. So one option to mitigate this is that I could put this on a wall charger every so often. I know people that have AGMs and do this like every month or so. That way you can get a full charge, but to me that's a little bit annoying. Or since the voltage is regulated by the ECU for this generation of Toyota Tacoma, I can actually get it reprogrammed or retuned to boost the alternator voltage. People like my friend Q who did my Overland Torque Tune often offers services like that. Yeah. But point being, if you decide you want the benefits of an AGM battery like I did, and you're going to spend a little bit of extra money to do so, make sure your investment will be worth it by properly taking care of it. I have really randomly gotten into batteries after doing a lot of research when my Tacomas died and also recently my Land Cruisers died as well. If you guys want more of a detailed video about why I went with an AGM battery over a lead acid again, let me know. But yeah, I'm excited to be running this thing on my Tacoma. All right, you guys, for this next segment, Cody wanted to join in, so we'll see how long he stays. Don't hit me. Don't hit me. Don't hit me. But we're going to be talking about oil changes. This is an important piece of maintenance item because unlike the battery stuff that I just talked about, that's going to be an item that I'm hopefully not gonna be changing out for maybe five or six years. This maintenance item is routine and it happens on a pretty frequent basis. I've learned a lot about oil changes on this truck specifically, which I try to keep up with to maximize the life of it. And if you watch my maintenance YouTube videos, you might see some of the earlier ones where I was changing my oil look a lot different than some of my more recent ones. I've refined my process a little bit, but now I feel like I have a really good system to get it done at home pretty fast and pretty cleanly. But first off, a question I get all the time is, should I use my Toyota Care oil changes? If you don't know, when you buy a new Toyota, and it's not just a Tacoma, I think it's really any Toyota, Toyota, they do 25,000 miles and I think part of that is two oil changes, one at the 10,000 mile mark and 20,000 mile mark complimentary when you buy your truck new. I took advantage of that even though I like taking oil changes in my own hands now. You can't beat free, plus they check your fluid levels and top off if you're low. So anyways, I recommend doing that, but now I'm talking about if you've gotten past that point and you're going to DIY them. So I have a couple of what I think are just essential tools for getting this done, making it easy, again, keeping it clean. And I know this is going to kind of have a bigger upfront cost but hear me out if you do like more than three oil changes at home i think the investment in these tools is worth it so first off definitely pick up the motivix tools oil change kit specific to the toyota tacoma i made the mistake of using a universal oil filter wrench that's like made of pop metal. It's got all sorts of cutouts to fit other vehicles and oil filter housings. It's nice that it was cheap, but it really comparatively to the one offered by Motivix tools that's notchless does not fit well compared to this one. I'm just afraid too of always breaking the plastic tabs on the oil filter housing, which is not possible when you have something like this. So this is a good candidate for the DIYer. 
I used to also go through just a ton of gloves and have oil drip down my arm until I used this oil filter draining tool. So this just screws on and basically drains excess oil in a nice clean way. The last thing I would recommend to pick up for a DIY oil change at home is this hyper tough drain container. Now I picked this up at Walmart. This is specifically a 16 quart one. It's got a little spot for your oil filter and basically when your oil drains, it all goes into this reservoir and then you can just close it up and it's all nice and contained. You don't have to worry about having an open drain pan like I used to have and then pouring that oil elsewhere to dispose of it. It can all stay here. And I think this thing was a good value, all things considered. And it's my newest tool in my oil change arsenal that I really like. Now those are all of the tools I recommend and the motor oil I recommend for these Tacomas is Havlin Pro RS. And it's actually a sustainably sourced plant-based synthetic motor oil that's pretty new to the market. In my own experience, it's very high performance, it maximizes fuel economy, and it's renewable and great for the environment too. And as a happy coincidence, the six quart quantity that comes in this smart change box happens to be the perfect amount for my motor every time I change my oil myself. Motor oil is conventionally sold in one quart or five quart quantities on the shelf. So this is just really nice. This is a pretty popular oil. So when I see it in stock online, I pick up a few boxes and I just keep it stocked. Here's a quick and easy one that I think a lot of people, including my past self, have overlooked, and that is greasing your drive shaft or basically servicing your U-joints. Now this one's a little weird when it comes to generation three of the Toyota Tacoma because basically depending on what model you have and what year of gen three you have, there's all sorts of different configurations where some people have completely sealed U-joints, so they're not greasable, and technically this maintenance item is one they don't really have to worry about. Or some people have two Zerk fittings like my TRD Offroad does over here. I've heard other people have four. You really just have to go under there and look to see yourself. I honestly made the mistake of not greasing or servicing mine the first two years I owned my truck because I honestly just assumed that they were sealed when it's so easy to just go there and check. But now knowing what I know, every 5,000 miles, I just take out my grease gun. I think I got this one from Harbor Freight. It was like the cheapest one I could find. I'm still on the same pack of red grease that I originally bought like two years ago. And for how easy this is to do, there really isn't an excuse and it's so much better to put the minimal time and honestly financial investment in making sure your U-joints are greased so that they don't prematurely wear. So your homework, if you don't know on your own Tacoma, is to crawl under there and check to see if you have any Zerk fittings and make sure they are regularly greased if you want a well-maintained vehicle. And again, I wish I did this easy one earlier on. So the last thing I'm gonna talk about today is kind of a general topic, but having gone through this myself and almost forking out over $2,000 for probably something that I didn't need to, I think it's worth mentioning here. So a while ago, I made this video about how I noticed my tie rod boot on my driver's side of my truck had fluid buildup and it appeared like something was leaking even though I really didn't have low power steering fluid, I wasn't noticing anything dripping on the floor. I actually already had this alignment appointment set up at a Toyota dealership because this was around the time I did a new suspension lift on my truck, which of course you need to get an alignment for right after. So after noticing that around the same time, I decided to just have them take a look at it and let me know what they thought. And basically what they came back with was that my steering rack had a leak and they actually wanted to keep it there 
overnight and part of the next day in order to replace it. Not having a really seasoned mechanical background myself and really just not understanding fully how the steering rack systems work in this truck, if I'm being honest, it was hard to make the determination about what to do. Like, was this problem super serious and needed to get done today? Or was this not that big of a deal? My truck seemed fine driving. Again, all the fluid levels were okay. And it was only when I noticed it that I really took concern. And because of that, I decided to not get it replaced and take it into another dealership for essentially a second opinion. At the new dealership, which was Mossy Toyota PB, I had a really nice and long conversation with the service tech who not only gave me a better price for if I wanted to get the steering rack replaced, but he also told me that if it were him, the leak really didn't look that severe. And he said it was kind of common in these Toyotas because I wasn't losing any fluid and nothing was like pouring out on my garage floor. He suggested just to monitor the situation. So that's what I've been doing. And then a lot of you guys also recommended I use this AT I think it was 205, but basically something that helps seals and leaks. It's been six months since I made that original video and have had nothing done, but took the recommendations from you guys to use that sealer and everything has been just fine. So my point being is I actually still don't mind going to the Toyota dealership. I will continue to do so, but it is a good idea to just generally make yourself knowledgeable about different service items. And when you need help, like I did, and I kind of didn't know what to do, solicit it. You guys are so awesome. Generally, the people at Toyota are really responsive and are happy to help you out if you have questions. And doing so can potentially help you not spending money to solve problems that technically don't really need to be fixed. So that's kind of all I have for this video. All of the maintenance related items I have learned over the years. I'm sure in the next four years, we're going to deal with a lot of different things as this truck gets more and more miles on it and it gets older. So I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot more, but I hope this video helped out. If you're like me and you're just trying to DIY and want to do the best you can, for your Tacoma. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to connect more with me, you can follow me on my Instagram. It is at Chloe Kuo Taco. I post more in real time on there. But other than that, I hope I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.